Welcome to the program. 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 You're listening to the Cruel and Unusual Sit Down Podcast. Chicago pizza. Chicago pizza. Like, it's good. I like Chicago pizza. It's got the sauces on top. It's little. It's very good. Uh, I think I figured out how it was originally created. I fig. I think I okay. I think I know the origin story of it. I was. This is how it went. So there was some guy, and he uh, they, they was like, "Hey, can you make pizza?" He couldn't, but he said, "Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can make it." So he because he needed a job. So he goes in there, and right away he starts uh, just looking around, but he doesn't know what to do. So he starts throwing the. Yeah, I mean, I figure he could make the. Somehow he made the crust. I didn't really think this through. Sometimes these are funny. Sometimes they're not. You still gotta, you gotta give them some credit. I'm, I, I'm trying to go down the pathway here. I mean, a lot of you, a lot of people, on the internet nowadays, they just jump around for thirty seconds, and that's that's entertainment. I mean, th- those are great too. But I'm just saying, this is different. You got to give it some credit. You gotta, you gotta let it cultivate. Don't give up so easy. Some of you gave up so easy watching it for like one minute. I mean, the name of the show isn't even brought out in one minute, and you're already leaving the show. you got to give it a chance. In fact, these shows should be, you should listen to every one of these about 20 times, every one of them, and then you might understand some of it. Then you might be able to, there's some details missed if you don't watch it that with that and that's why i'm saying how could some of you only have watched it for like 30 seconds some of them are like two minutes and 30 seconds i say well at least they gave it i'll give them some credit they i mean everyone has to make decisions about how they use their time i can accept it i can accept that you decided okay this isn't even worth half of five minutes times times and a half time so you have to listen to this many times before you'll understand it there's all sorts of different information in there and I think some of you just think you can listen for 30 seconds and you're done and you can go on to something else. Everything else is, is good too though. I mean almost all entertainment on this whole everything nowadays is just so great. So I understand. This is the best podcast that has ever been and ever will be. And it, that doesn't say in much. But it is true. It is true. Do I have winner's guilt? No, I don't. I do. I never had winner's guilt. Not one time. Not even at the church wrestling match. It wasn't really an uh, organized wrestling match. It just kind of broke out. Uh, kind of initiated by me. I won. Well, I didn't win. The other guy. The other guy. The guy that talks. The guy in the front of the place, whatever his name is, he cheated. He, che- he cheated. I think he tried to do a half Nelson. So I, that's where I said you're you're not allowed to do a half Nelson. This isn't this isn't street brawling, sir. This is this is wrestling. So th- this guy goes in there, and he's he's making the pizza. He throws he somehow gets the crust right, which is hard, but he gets it, and then he starts throwing the cheese on there because he doesn't really know. Somebody comes in, a real, like, uh, I picture the person that came in is like this snide, sneering, um, callous individual that's real, you know, kind of mean-spirited. And they come in there, and they're like, oh, you don't know how to make a pizza because you're an idiot. You're supposed to put da-da-da. You're supposed, you know, you're supposed to, oh, you don't even know how to make a pizza, stupid. Like, they, they didn't try to nurture him, you know? They didn't try to nurture the poor man that was trying to make a pizza at the Chicago restaurant. And so, so the, so the, (laughs) so that person said, all right, you know, he wasn't going to take it. So his, and to rebel, he said, this is the way I make pizza. I always made pizza this way. This is the way I make it. And the guy's like, you're a fool. Your family's a fool. Everything you know, everything you ever heard of is a fool. You're a fool. And, and you shouldn't, you don't even belong in this restaurant in Chicago. No, 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 no. Yeah, he's chastising him. He's telling him, 
you're not part of this. You know, you know what? God said you're not part of it. Jesus said it. It's in the, the it's in the rabbinicals. It's, it's in everything. It's, it's scripturally, you don't exist. You're out of it. So he said, nope, this is the way I always make pizza. Stupid. You're the stupid one. He said, this is the guy, the good guy now is talking. I assume he's a good guy. And he, he, you know, he didn't know what he was doing at first. He was trying. And so he says, hey, that's the way I do it. That's just, the fu- that's just the way I did it. My brother did it. My cousins did it. My uncle did it that way. My aunts did it. I'm from, you know, wherever pizza was originated from. I don't know what country it's from. I don't know a lot about history because I, I don't care about, you know, he's lying. But at this point, he's trying to sell it like he's just a local partisan who's just trying his best. And he says, this is just the way we make it at my house, okay? And the guy's like, I don't, he says, no, you, you know, he's, he's skeptical. He says, that ain't going to work. You, you can't put the sauce on top. So he puts the sauce on top and it just goes everywhere and it messes up. So then the guy's like, you know, snide and sneering and going, nah, ha, ha. You see, I told you, I told you, you're a fool. Your family's a fool. Everybody, you know, and the God says you're going to go straight to the, to the bottom of the ocean and be burned up. Ha, ha, ha. You're nothing. And we have to fight against you. My pastor said we have to. Think about how we have to be hateful. And remember Cain, he, he he didn't bring the blood, and Abel did bring the blood. God loves the blood. We've got to, it's people like you we have to eliminate, you know? And th- th- he's like, he says, if we don't eliminate you, then, th- then the Yahweh is going to get us. So he says, look, so this guy never gave up. That's what I liked about the Chicago guy. That's why I like the story a lot. Because he shows his resilience here. He after all that, imagine all that happening to you, and then like you're gonna just stand there and and just deliver this part because it seems like you would give up. At the, at, a lot of people would have caved in if it weren't but not not this guy. Not th- I guess his name was Luigi. I assume his name must have been Luigi. I don't know why. I don't know where that origin of that name came from. But he says Luigi goes. That's the way we make it. I don't. You know what? It's all because of you that I forgot to shore up the edges and now I got to get a deep pan. I was, I meant to put it in a deep pan. That's the way we always do it. I've done it for that way since, and my grandparents did it that way and their grandparents did it that way. This goes back to before the Bible. It goes back into the time of the Assyrians. What do you think about that? In the time of Ur and the Chaldeans. And it's so far back that even Abraham doesn't know anything about it. It's in a whole nother tongue. What do you think of that? And it's got all kinds of uh, ins and outs that you can't even grasp. You, you, you're foolish, low-level, snide, and sneering, so the guy, he goes, so he's, he says, you, you interrupted me. And that's why, and so he shores it up and he makes the pizza. He puts the sauce on top. The guy's like, that's too much sauce. You shouldn't put that much. That's your, it's going to be terrible. Well, it, uh, the rest, you, as we know, is history. I mean, everyone loves Chicago pizza. Ask someone if they want Chicago pizza. And if they know what it is, they want it. And if they don't know what it is, I still think they're going to want it. Well, they're going to be curious right away, right? You assume probably people in Chicago could make good because they're one of the bigger cities. I always say, whatever comes from one of the bigger cities, you got to figure New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles, those are the big cities. If something comes out of there, you have to assume if it got out of there, it must have been, must have been you know, Luigi, uh, the originator, the creator. You know? Kind of had his own flood. You know, he had his own flood of sauce on the pizza and that's what i that's what i especially like about the story and you know what that guy that came in there was was chastising luigi i <laughs> there's something wrong with that guy you know that, i think that's the kind of guy that's the kind of people that just you know come in see somebody trying and they just want to shoot them down you know those are the kind of people that i think god meant when he talked about eliminating people and how you know he wants blood and how it's war. This is war. He said, you know, Yahweh, the Yahweh has basically said, if you're not on his, essentially what he said is, if you're not on his side, you're against them. He basically said, this is his show and you're just part of it. So you should, it's a, he's a big, he's, he's one of the biggest ones. He's in the sky. He was here before the sky was made. Just imagine that. Even before anyone had a name or anything, there he was. I mean, it's a force. This is a they, them. They're a force up there. 
selling it, selling it, and making sure that we know with uh, interruption advertising, rain, precipitation, storms, earthquakes, floods. Floods just when rain gets out of hand. I also have a problem because sometimes they think flood, they go, oh, no, it was a flood, which is, it does cause, okay, people, they get, you know, all right, floods are not a good thing. I didn't say they were. But here's what I'm suggesting. So let's say you have a flood and it floods out of place. Stick a dam there. Bingo. Problem solved. Now you got water. Now you got something out of it. Say, this is where you want to go. Okay. Here you go. And watch that water just be going, hey, this ain't what we wanted, pal. And he's like, nope. Looks like that's what you wanted. You said you wanted a flood. And uh, the, the flood's like, no, actually, I just wanted to go through here. And no, that's not what it looked like to me. You're flooding the whole places. People had to get in boats. They had a rescue, search and rescue. They were sending outreach programs out here. All the electricity went off. All of the sewage came up into this everywhere and caused disease and famine. And, uh, okay, so now you're here. You stay. You're staying now. We ain't getting rid of you. It's like, no, I just wanted to pass through. And I'll go, you know, no, no, that's it. That's the end. You're here now. You're stuck. That's what we said. So that's how we solved all floods right there. And you think about it, that kind of solves the Bible too. So I was hoping that by solving the Bible, maybe we could finally get, get past them. Because if you think about it, if, God, if, Yahweh, if the Yahweh keeps throwing floods out our way, we've got to be ready for it. I think that's why they built the tower in the first place. You know, they built a big tower. They said, oh, yeah, you're going to send floods down here. We'll just build a big tower to get up there. And if you notice, if you read the cubits all through that book, you'll see that everything is right. The, you'll understand the floodwaters went to a certain cubit. Well, they built the tower up a little bit higher. They were, that's what they were talking about. So they said, you know what? You're going to flood us out. We'll just build a tower. God knocked down their tower, though. I mean, that's where they they overlooked. But here's what I'm suggesting. So when there's a flood, we just keep it. We say there's the flood. We kept it. Solves it. It solves it. You might be skeptical. But so was that guy that was going after Luigi that time. Poor Luigi. Hey, Luigi was just a regular old, old person just trying his best. You know, he got kind of good grades. You know, he got a little better grades than the other kids. And er so he didn't like them. Yeah, he didn't even barely get hardly any good grades. Okay? It's just every now and then he got a little bit better than them. And they, so they resented him for it. It's really sickening. I mean, it's, it's really completely sickening. Because some of the other people were right in the same area and they were given a pass so where's poor luigi he just trying to make it he says i'm gonna you know what i'm just gonna make pizza he doesn't know anything about it he, he says look i have to learn on the job i don't have i didn't get to go to pizza school or i didn't get to go to even to learn how to cook i don't even know what that it, all it is is um basically grass and you grind it up and then you kind of you have a couple of pro yeah put it in the oven Something about the oven. Okay. That's, uh, we'll stop that one. That's, I'm probably going to stop that one. I figure, though, since it was so good, I was just going to something else, right? I mean, because that was, so, uh, did you notice? Uh, okay. Okay, that was over now. That's over. I don't, usually don't like to let you know too much about the process behind the scenes, but that, we call that a bit. And that was what I consider a good bit. The audience doesn't. The, the audience usually doesn't spend much time listening to these. Right? But they don't really appreciate how much extra effort it takes. Even congressmen, they don't have to put that much effort into what they say. Yeah, that's right. Our leaders don't have to put that much effort into what they say. That's why everything they say is so empty. Because, yeah, that's why when they speak, you don't get really compelled. You're not really moved personally by anything that any of them say, right? Ah, yeah, that's right. Because they don't really, they don't care because they have the power without you. They don't need you. They had the power before you and they're going to keep it without you. And they're not trying to connect to you. All they're doing is saying the most bland things that they could do. Like the guy that's, that's making fun of Luigi. I'll bring the joke back. Luigi 
was a good guy. He tried it, you know, he didn't know stuff, but then he figured it out and it made it better. I don't like it when people say, okay, let's say you're in a room and, and yeah, somebody says, let's get a pizza, right? It's always like, so let's say you're in a group uh, and you're um, getting ready to go to a protest to protest fascism. Uh, legitimate fascism, not like uh, you're really going to protest it, right? Not like some of these groups who claim to be always fighting against fascism, but then they're not. They actually are the fascists. Well, this would be the opposite of that. So you're there, and uh, you're like, hey, let's get a pizza. So then so, uh, not hopefully not you says that because that doesn't he leaves you no opportunity. You can't be the one. If you said it, then you, you won't be able to respond later. So hopefully someone else says it. Hey, let's get a pizza. And then, then you got to wait. And then someone else will say, you know what? Let's get a Chicago pizza. Uh, ha, ha, ha. You know what? You ever had? And everyone goes, everyone will just go crazy. They'll say, we, you can mean to tell me we can get a Chicago pizza, but we're in San Diego. What do you mean? They say they have it here too. They have it everywhere. It went everywhere. Chicago pizza went everywhere. That guy Luigi made it and... And everyone thought he was crazy, but then, well, who's crazy? And now who's crazy? So, uh, and then that's when you can say, that's when you can jump in there, right there. That's your, this is it. So one person says we want pizza, the other person suggests Chicago pizza. What do you do? Nothing interesting could be said except for this, except for this next thing. Normally, under the conventional path, you might just say, yeah. Or you might say, sometimes if you don't like the group that much, you could just say, well, I don't like Chicago pizza. I had a bad experience with Chicago pizza one time. I ordered a Chicago pizza and the guy got there and uh, by the time he got there, uh, so, I, so he gets there, this pizza guy gets there and then He's, he starts he starts shooting everybody. So that's why I really don't like I don't like Chicago pizza that much. Out of that and someone says, "Wait, you shouldn't judge all Chicago pizzas based on one experience like that." And then everyone says, "Yeah, this doesn't tie into all that though. This isn't a, this isn't about that. Don't don't mistake it. This is just about pizza only. This is not an allegory. This is only about a pizza." And the fact is, when someone says Chicago pizza, everyone's going to be happy. And then you, what are you going to do? You have to be ready. So now is your big moment. A lot is at stake. It's all been set up for you. One person said, let's get pizza. Another person, within a right amount of time, not too quickly, but not too long either, away, says, hey, you know what? I heard we can get Chicago pizza. Even though we're in San Diego, we can still get it because Chicago pizza goes around the world. It's something that escaped Chicago. It must be good. Anything that escaped Chicago is good. I don't know enough about Chicago except for the pizza. Well, that's when you got to say, the best line, I think, ever, where you could say, you know what? This is the same way that the Bible was written. And they'll know what you mean, and everyone else will too. Like I said, you kind of have to listen to it a lot before you really, there's a lot of layers in there. First time you hear it, you won't, probably won't. But that's not my fault. Uh, I didn't do it on purpose either. What happened was, Luigi came to me in a dream and he told me that there would be seven years of famine and seven years of more famine and then like nothing but famine after that, he said. So he said there's no point in even storing food because it ain't going to do you any good. There is not going to be enough food. He said the world is destroyed and that's it. So I said, well, how did you know all that? He said, look. Some things are only for me to understand, not for you. And that's it. So that's all I know. That's all I know. I have to end it there. You know, at some point this thing, it has to stop. I'm not going to be able to 
keep speaking and expecting to have any meaning at all in this. There's only so much you can say about the subject. And after a while, it kind of seems like it's pointless to keep talking. And that's why I say when you have a bit, you should be more concise. You should try to uh, sum it up quickly. Make sure that you don't leave any extra space in there or don't just be standing there rambling on while the audience is like not understanding exactly what you're saying or especially don't leave no pauses in between. Let the audience have some space in their mind a little bit just so that they could at least try to understand what you're saying. Because the thing is, if you bombard them with information, they will not be able to even grasp any of it and they'll forget every single bit of it. And that doesn't work. That's not what you want. You want all of your thoughts to be in their head all the time. But instead, what you're going to find is you try to bombard them with it. You're going to find out that it's not concise and it doesn't have coherence. And that is the recipe. That is the recipe. I have extinguished my time here. And now the show must Stop for now until next time. This has been the Cruel and Unusual Sit Down Podcast. Coming to you weekdays at 11. Hey, YouTube, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe.